Bless the Lord. Good evening. So we're here from Fellowship Church. Welcome to Fellowship Church in Southern Maryland. And those of you that are online, glad you could be with us. And uh, I appreciate you being with us this evening. And uh, let's take a moment. Set in your heart. You know, First Peter 3, I was reading that this week and last week, and I was preparing for teaching on Sunday. And in First Peter 3, it says, In your heart set apart Christ as Lord. It's talking about what to do, how to handle injustice. You know, we need some teaching on that in our society, I think. Everyone's crying about injustice, which, which is, um, you know, which happens, certainly. But uh, do they handle it the way God wants them to handle it? You know, First Peter 3 says to live exemplary lives so that those who slander us could be ashamed of their slander. To have such good conduct among the unbelievers. And the root of that, Peter says, in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Amen. So in our hearts, we, we set him apart tonight. Jesus, we set you apart tonight in our hearts as Lord. You are Lord. This is the reality. But sometimes in our hearts, Lord, even after coming to you, we want to get off the altar, as they say. Even after surrendering our lives, we want to take it back sometimes because we just get impatient or for whatever reason, Lord. But we return to you tonight, God. In our hearts, we set you apart as Lord, Jesus. And we say you are holy. Holy, holy, holy. Sing, holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Worthy to receive glory and worthy to receive honor, worthy to receive all our praise today. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him and lift Him up. Praise Him, exalt His name forever. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy, worthy to receive glory, yeah, worthy to receive honor, worthy to receive all our praise today. Yes, he is. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him and lift him up. Praise Him, exalt His name forever. Yeah. Praise Him, praise Him and lift Him up. Come on, praise Him, exalt His name forever. Just the voices, let me hear you sing. Praise him. Yes, praise him and lift him up. Come on, praise him. Exalt his name forever. Yeah, praise him. Oh, praise him and lift him up. Come on, praise him, praise him. Exalt his name forever. One more time, praise him, praise him. 
Praise the name of Jesus. Praise him and lift him up. Come on, praise him. Exalt his name forever. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Worthy to receive glory and worthy to receive honor. Worthy to receive all our praise today. Thank you, Father. You're so worthy, Lord. Enthroned between the cherubim, God of glory, so full of glory, reigning in the highest place, you come, Lord, to dwell with the lowly, who is like our God, great is God most high, the sovereign King, Lord of eternity, glory to the highest Lord from ages past, who was and is and will be. You and you alone Pour grace down from your throne From your seat of mercy Let's think about the great, great love of God You show goodness to all your works, giving life and every good thing. And when we sin, you gave your only Son to draw us near and make us holy. Hallelujah. Who is like our God, great is God most high, the sovereign King, the Lord of eternity. Oh, glory to the highest Lord from ages past, who was and is and will be. You and you alone Pour grace down from your throne From your seat of mercy From your seat of mercy Great is God, great is God, most high, the sovereign King, the Lord of eternity. All glory to the highest Lord from ages past, who was and is and will be. Cause you and you alone, you alone, God, 
pour grace down from your throne, from your seat of mercy. Great is God most high, the sovereign King, the Lord of eternity. Glory to the highest Lord from ages past, who was and is and will be. Tell me who is like, tell me who is like, tell me who is like our God. Thank you, Father. Isn't he worthy of praise, ladies and gentlemen? Doing what only he could do. Reaching down with his mighty hand, his arm which was not too short to save. And redeeming us, rescuing us from the pit. And giving us everything we need for life and godliness through his son, Christ Jesus. Amen. God, we're so grateful to you tonight. We give you all the glory, Lord. Father, we just pray tonight that you would put your revelation afresh in our hearts, Lord. And let the name of Jesus and the glory of the Most High God bring forth from this place, Lord, and from each of us that are listening tonight, Father. Renew your spirit in us, God. Refresh our hearts, Father. Renew us with power. The power of your spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. All right. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord. All right, Brother Mark is going to come for a word of prayer and some testimony. Hey, we're rocking and rolling now. Okay, fellowship with another church out there in uh, uh, Front Royal, they were having a prayer breakfast. Well, they were having a breakfast, a free breakfast for bikers, motorcyclists on uh, Saturday morning. And uh, there was 40, maybe 45 turnout. And uh, right after the breakfast, they gave a quick message and a couple, couple of souls got saved. Hallelujah. And like the uh, speaker said, uh, the angels in heaven rejoice when one soul repents. Glory to God. And uh, well, I'm sure a bunch of y'all had some fun over the three-day weekend. Uh, because it was a rainy weekend, I just stayed up there and got a, stayed at one of the hotels that has an indoor pool so the kids would have some place to play. And uh, they did. They called up a couple friends and told them to come join us. <clears throat> so that's where we had some fun. And I'm going to give you this one quick verse. And I've got three of them. I had to pick out one. Isaiah 55, 11. 
So shall my, this is God speaking, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. It's a good memory verse. Okay, and we do have some prayer requests, and we have some new names, some drop names. I'm going to start off with, and Pastor, I thought maybe we'd get Pastor up here and give us a testimony on his, his morning events, but uh, if I may, Pastor, um, I just want to ask prayer for the Eric Holden family, and uh, that if they're not, I pray, Lord, for the salvation of that whole entire family, and Lord, that you would uh, <clears throat> send loving born-again believers to share your gospel message with them and their own personal testimony, and uh, the son, Fabian, 20 years young, will be living in the house that uh, Pastor's brother left behind when he went to heaven few months back. So this young man, Fabian, uh, will be going to school in Georgetown, going to law school. So I want to lift up this young man, Fabian, for his salvation first and foremost, and that the Lord would bless him, uh, give him, continually to give him a mind that is sharp, receptive, and that will retain all that he, he learns. I thank you and I praise you for that, Lord. Again, for his salvation, first and foremost. <clears throat> now, we, are, we have this list here that I will read off. Ken and Lorraine Mahan, Lydia Witten, pastor's granddaughter, Ella Mason, and his grandson, Evan, Harry and Roxanne Burgess, Jerry McCauley, <clears throat> Christine Crown, Betty Stepp, Jimmy Ryan, Ronnie Stillwell, Bill Laracy and daughter Dawn, uh, Ray and Betty Remo's grandson Tate Remo, Denise Edelin, Joanne Williams, Myron's Aunt Shirley who had had the uh, COVID virus, Mike Winslow, Jane Headley had the virus. Roy Gibson, I pray, Lord, that you give him full, complete healing and recovery for his back. And uh, he, Roy Gibson, had, you said he had a, a kidney stent taken out last week? He had the kidney stones first two weeks to uh, get rid of. Uh -huh. And they uh, had to put a stent in it once they blew it up. But praise God, he said he's feeling great. Praise the Lord, Roy Gibson's feeling great. Uh, recovering from what he had had, kidney stones. And Lord, if there's any remaining, we pray you clear that up and then not uh, return. In Jesus' name, Renee Miller's grandson, Troy Woodell, Ricky Rogers, Andrew and Carolyn Rander, Danny and Carolyn McKinney, Sandy Kavanaugh, upcoming surgery, Tommy Benfield's mother, Charlotte, Okay, had the COVID virus. I like to say had it because God's word said that by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. Praise God. Debbie Roberts, Jesse Hughes, Georgetta Bonds and son Mike, Stan, Joe, and Dixie Kacheski, John and Rose Younger, Michael Turley, Mike Twigg, Ed Horn, uh, Garnett Anderson. Hello, Garnett. You're looking great, Garnett. You feeling okay this evening? Praise the Lord. Uh, Andy uh, Melberg, his wife, Pat, and their daughter, Sarah Melberg. Robert Pickle and Aunt Joyce. Larry and Alan Brannon. Dale Hayes. Paul Manningly. Pastor's wife, Donna. Uh, Robbie Anderson. Frank Agate, his wife, and their son. Daniel? Daniel Agate? He's the one down yeah, in Florida. Daniel, he's doing great. I'm glad to hear Daniel's doing great. Praise the Lord. 
uh, Crystal Younger, Sherry Greenhow, Gary Beeman. No, notation here says answered prayer for Gary Beeman. He's doing great. Gary Beeman's doing great. Uh, Peyton Perez. Uh, notation here with leukemia. And there's a little notation on the other side, something about seven. I don't know what that's about. But God is a healing God and heals people with leukemia as well. Uh, John Brady, <clears throat> David Maddy, Carol DeHavens, or DeHaven, Sister Joyce, Lee Cooper, and Lee Cooper's baby. Oh, uh, that's Linda, Linda Bay's. Did you say it was Linda Bay's niece? Yes. Leah Cooper. Jesse Booth, and Dan Goody, and Susan Lehman, we're praying for the healing of her neck and back uh, from the top of her backbone to the bottom of her backbone. Bottom. We pray healing, restoration, and renewal. Jeff Birch, and we are lifting up Rose's niece, Kimberly. Father, we pray you meet Kimberly right where she she is has needs. Uh, I'll just say, Lord, that she's, she's out in the wilderness, spiritually speaking, and we pray, God, for salvation first and foremost. We pray, Lord, that uh, you do all that's needed in doing a great and mighty work and bringing her to a place where she's physically, mentally, spiritually healed, restored to a close relationship with you. And for all these names that we have lifted my coverall prayer, Heavenly Father, is uh, first, first and foremost, again, is for salvation. Our eternity is the first and most important thing in your kingdom, and that it would not be the opposite. The only other choice is in hell, totally separated from you for eternity. So, Lord, for salvation for each of them and for all family members, we know, Lord, that you are a God that saves families. And uh, we pray, Lord, for physical healing, physical strength, uh, a strong immune system that would ward off any, any new illnesses coming. I pray, Father, for all those on this list and all those uh, represented in Fellowship Church, family members, friends, uh, that we would have the optimum physical and mental and spiritual health for each uh, each continuing day for the duration of our lives here on earth and that you would continue to bless and anoint us, give us the strength, the, the power, the, uh, the boldness to share your gospel message with the lost and to share our personal testimony uh, with the joy that you give which passes all our understanding. So we thank you and praise you, Lord, as uh, we lift up our, our United States government from uh, the president, his administration, the Congress and the Senate, and through all their staff and all their family, all of their families, Lord, uh, special blessing. Again, salvation, uh, revival for citizens of the United States of America as a whole, citizens of our country, a revival. And uh, we thank you, Father, for your blessings that you continue to give us. They're innumerable, immeasurable, and we are grateful. I, for one, say, Lord, I would be lost without you. And uh, I don't want to begin to contemplate how I would be existing if I did not know you as my Savior and Lord. Yes, Pastor? I want to mention two things to you real quick. Donna's test all came back negative so far. Pastor's wife, Donna Harris, test came back negative so far. Lori had Lori Headings, Lori Heading uh, Headings. Has a, block, blockage in her heart. a blockage in her heart. And then uh, Pat Malberg had, I believe, a pacemaker put in today. Pat Malberg had a pacemaker put in today. Yeah. And so they'll be able to monitor her heart for the next several years. 
that they can monitor Pat Melberg's heart for the next several years. <clears throat> and Heavenly Father, for uh, uh, let's see. Oh, for Lori Headings, Father, for that blockage, Lord, we pray that you would dissolve it in a safe way that it would not cause a clot in another area of her body. Strengthen her heart, Lord, we pray. Renew it, restore it. Give her peace, Lord, that uh, she can feel at rest with no concerns, that she can trust in you and know, uh, perhaps with upcoming uh, medical examinations, that she is totally and completely healed. To your honor and glory, in Jesus' name, amen. Oh. oh. The two B's? Yeah, Bill and Rooney. Bill and Rooney. <laughs> I, I forgot all about the uh, the Jude House prayer list. Jesse M. Praying for a family health and protection. Uh, Kimberly Williams. Pray for me and two of my sons. Uh, haven't talked to and seen him in s several months. And I'm in need of special prayer for family and for recovery. Stephen W. Pray that the Jude House... Clients have a revival in their hearts for Jesus. Peter F., for all who are touched by the Lord's hands to have protection, healing, guidance, forgiveness, compassion, and love. Michael Walker, pray for my family and loved ones, everyone in my presence, and for my daughter who passed away on Tuesday. Lord, we do pray for Michael Walker and the family who have suffered this loss. We pray your comfort to them. We pray for Maurice Johnson. Pray for, he wants to pray for his family, able to, that he is able to complete the program there at the Jude House, six-month program. Father, give him strength. Give him uh, that tenacity that he needs to hang in there. He wants to pray for his mother who is short of money, needs some support to help him out, uh, pay the bills. We eat out of churches, and we get clothes from the churches. If you can, share, uh, donate money, any money to 816 Pastor said I could give this information. 816 Clint Wood Court, Baltimore, Maryland. That's 816 Clint Wood Court, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, 21225. Uh, this is Barbara J. Johnson. Best wishes. I don't know why that name's down there. The prayer was from Maurice Johnson. Okay. Just two last ones. Jesse H. Praise. God, I want to pray for my children to know and always think of them and keep them protected and accept God in their life. Chris P., pray for myself and all the Jude House. Pray that things here in a couple of months go well for me when I leave. Amen to that. Bill? Good evening, Fellowship Church. Good to be back after two weeks in Washington State, visiting my father. Things went well. Uh, my wife and I and daughter were able to give a good testimony. He didn't come to the Lord yet, but that's between him and the Lord. We can only do our part. We're going to continue on Song of Songs, and there is a handout and I'll say, as we go through this series of about 10 lessons, we're on chapter 1. Open your Bibles to chapter 1, verses 12 to, 12 to 17, the last part of chapter 1. And the handout tonight, as I have each night, has some questions. And those that give me the answers by Sunday, I have two free tickets, $20 each, to the Museum of the Bible. They're good until 2021, December, the end of this year. If you don't have a questionnaire and you're on YouTube, you can uh, print it out from our church website. I always put everything there, the slides and the handouts. So between slides, handouts, and being listening to the message, this is that we will grow in Christ. It sure helps me to grow getting in and preparing it. Into his word is the most blessed thing that we can do because everything else comes from 
the doctrines presented in the Word of God. And this book of Song of Songs is a book of doctrines, teachings, more than uh, exhortation or reproval or teaching the four reasons why we have the Word of God. This is doctrine. The title is My Growing Relationship with the King. And I say my because each one of us that are born again in Christ should say my growing relationship with the king. And the king is who? Jesus Christ, the king of kings. Lesson three, love grows in courtship with the king. Remember, we're going like marriage in Genesis 1-1. We leave and cleave, become one, and then we weave. And that's the sequence that Song of Songs follows. I'll read, let's do a little prayer before I get into this. That worked good. Lord God, we do thank you for your word. As it may speak to uh, others' hearts as you've spoken to me. And there's a great confidence and, and just a relationship we can have with you. I know in singing we talked of holy, holiness and your love. And we hear that a lot, Lord. Now, show us through your word in this relationship from the past what it means for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll begin with a quote from Charles Spurgeon, C.H. Spurgeon. Just part of it here. Some, well, I'll do it all. I do not wonder that some people cannot read Solomon's song, like some can't read Revelation and be blessed. We do not expect that they should. If I put a book of algebra or a table of logarithms into the hand of a child who has just learned the multiplication table, I do not marvel that he should not understand it. The fact is that the song is to the whole Bible what the Holy of Holies was to the temple. You may walk into the Acts of the Apostles and the Gospels and say, here I am in the outer court of the temple. You may go to the Psalms and the Epistles and say, here I am in the court of the priest, the inner court. But the Canticles, or Song of Songs, are the Holy of Holies. And he that has not learned to enter with the high priest into that which is within the veil will never be able to read Solomon's song. I thought that was, to me, that was, I identified with what C.H. Spurgeon wrote. And let's continue. Song of Songs, it's three perspectives, past, present, and future. And we covered this at the beginning, but how many wives that did Solomon know in intimacy? How many? Does the Bible say that Solomon knew in a relationship as a husband and wife to have children? How many did he have? No. Error. Bruni got it. The scriptures say, this tells us how our imagination goes wild because of the culture, because of past teachings, and not scripture alone. He had one wife, Nema. The scriptures identify that one wife in 2 Chronicles 12, 13, and 1 Kings. And why do I say that? Because it's important to know that he had one wife, and one son, Rehoboam. That's the only son I identifies, plus two daughters, as it tells in 1 Kings. And then Proverbs was written by Solomon. And it's easy, he says in chapter 4, the mother of my youth taught me, my father, to, be, to have wisdom. The Pastor Marvin covered Chapter 31 of Proverbs, Leomo, that's spoken of the woman, the Proverbs 31 woman. 
That means that Solomon, from his childhood, from his birth, he was appointed to be king through David, through Bathsheba. And they raised him to be that king, that David missed the point, but God forgave him. But they raised and put all their life to teach Solomon through all the riches in the kingdom to be the king that would ask for wisdom when it came his time. Several other verses. But that relates to, in the past, he did have a physical relationship. A first love. He was around 20 years old. We know when David fell, he was around 50. And then the last 20 years, he was suffering the consequences, but he didn't have relationships with other women, his concubines or nobody. And they put their efforts into that one son, Solomon. There's poetry and song mixed with this book, one of a thousand five songs. So the poetry makes it uh, harder to understand because if we do in our natural mind look at this, or if we look at the Jews who don't know Christ, that don't have the Holy Spirit, their minds will be carnal. Our minds will be carnal. The Holy Spirit is our teacher the one that anoints, gives us. In the present, our first love is who? Christ. When we are born again, we enter our first love. We see from the Ephesians and Revelation, they lost their first love. That can happen to believers. But we can get it back and stay in it. And it also relates with our sanctification, our growing in Christ. Christ growing in me, because Christ doesn't grow. He stays the same. God is the same. The Holy Spirit's the same. We don't get more of it. We got all of it when we're born again. But the Holy Spirit gets more of us in our minds, in our hearts, control of our lives. We must decrease that old man in us so he will increase, same as John the Baptist said. And then the future, the bodily resurrection, the rapture, the coming, the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to leave this world, all those that are dead, and Christ first, then those that are alive. And then we'll, the marriage feast of the Lamb, the cleave. And then we're going to serve him during the millennium for reign with him, not just serve him, reign with Christ for a thousand years. Amen. That's the marriage feast of the Lamb, after the marriage. And then we're going to, be in that new heaven and new earth, which is for eternity. So as Israel was the husband, the Lord God, Jehovah, was the husband, and Israel was the wife in the old past, today Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. We are the bride of Christ. We have, um, we have left our old life, our old man, through the second Adam, Christ, we left, we're cleaved to him through our salvation and sanctification, and we're laboring together, Christ in me, Christ in us. This is from Acts to the Revelation 3, this period of time, the present. So let's look at the scripture tonight in this exchange. Who is speaking in verses 12 to 14, and verses 15 to 17. It's important that we say, is the woman speaking, which represents the church spiritually, but physically back then, he had a relationship, his first love, the person you see when you first, I know my wife, when I met her, it was love at first sight. And Solomon had that for this woman, and he kept it the rest of his life. Marriage, once for all. That's what God's designed from Genesis through the end. That's his best plan for every person, every marriage. So verses 12 to 14. Okay. Did it work? Yeah, it did. All right. 
The woman is speaking. The woman is speaking to the king. The lowly woman that couldn't even look up at him back when he first saw her, love at first sight, beginning of chapter 1. Uh, his love is um, greater than wine. Now she's speaking to him. This is, the, the love is growing. Love grows. Uh, last time we spoke on this, it was love uh, begins. So it's, it's starting to grow. He's leaving his, she's leaving her old life, not the king. The king has everything, all the riches that there are. Everything that's needed, the king already has. But this woman, this lowly woman, as you and I were before we came to know Christ, no matter how rich or what station in life we had, what race we are, we're all the same. And this woman, as this woman, and our love is going to grow with Christ, but we're going to see how his love, the king, towards us is going to be revealed that we understand the greatness of his love toward us, too, as we grow in our love back to him. Beginning, while the king sitteth at his table. So the king is sitting at his table. Table is a, a place of eating, communion. Uh, we will participate in the king's table at the marriage feast of the Lamb. It represents eating union and communion with Christ and fellowship with each other when you eat together. You don't want to eat with, at certain times with others, but other times you do. And then it begins with three spices. The, the senses, see, hear, touch, smell, taste, they're very obvious in this poetry, in this letter of love. Some call it aromatherapy. You smell something that puts a sense into you, a feeling. Such as lavender does, it helps children go to sleep. You put that fragrance in their room and relaxes them. Well, Solomon knew all these different spices, but there's three of them. Spikenard, myrrh, and campire. And I was thinking, why these three spices? Why not others? Well, there's a, a really, I would say, blessed experience or knowledge to see why did he mention these three spices in this order? Because God inspired it. Solomon didn't come up with this. He had the knowledge, but putting it together and writing it with his pen, God led him to do that. He was led of the Spirit. This is Inspired and preserved. So if there's an order, if there's a sequence of three, is, it, is there some lesson from it? And none of the commentaries had this, but I'll, I'll, I'll go into what it taught me. Spikenard, the first one. It's only mentioned uh, here and two times at the end of Jesus' life when they anointed his head, the woman, with oil towards and then the woman that anointed his feet with oil towards the end of his life. Two times besides here in Song of Solomon. So Spikner, it's very fragrant. It's very expensive. It's rare. Why? Because it grows in the high places. It grows in the Himalayan mountains. 9,000 to 19,000 feet. That's the growing where it grows. So this first one is a very high place, very rare, very expensive. And even this fragrance could have stayed with Jesus where he would send it when he was going through the trials and the persecution. It was their labor of love, giving all that they had. That very expensive thing which Judas said, don't waste that on him. Give it to the poor. And Jesus said, no, she knows what she's doing. She was loving Jesus as we're supposed to love him. So the first one he uses, or the woman that uh, he's writing about, she's speaking now. The spikener sends forth the smell thereof. So it's sending it forth. 
What's the second one? Mirror. That's mentioned more and it's more common and that grows. And that's another, it's a bundle of mirror is my will beloved to me. So the first, this fragrance is going towards her and then a bono amir is my well beloved to me. He shall lay all night between my breasts. So that mirror there is used 16 times. It's the third gift, incense, frankincense, and mirror that were brought to Jesus at his birth, the king's. Mirror representing he's going to die as a prophet. It's a spice that they mix with wine and to give him on the cross, and they brought it to uh, embalm his body or keep it from smelling after his death. They brought the mirror. So it produces, it's used for a lot of things. He shall lie all night between my breast. Shall is future. It doesn't say he is. As you're in a relationship of someone that you're engaged with, that you're betrothed with, you don't enter in the act of before marriage. You wait, but you imagine it. And shall lie all night between my breasts. Future. My beloved is unto me as a cluster of campfire. This one has description. Campfire in the vineyards and in Gideon. Two descriptive phrases with campire. What's campire? It grows four to six feet. It's creamy or white colored flowers that are very fragrant. And where does it grow? In the vineyards, right, which are in trestles about five feet high where the, the vines grow and the grapes. But where is in Giddy? It's in the lowest part of the earth, the Dead Sea. There's a cave there that David hid in that had streams, freshwater streams that go right into the Dead Sea. So even in the lowest part of the earth, a thousand feet below sea level, we find life. So this is these three fragrances, plants, represent the smells put forth in the highest places to the lowest places on this earth. It shows God as a creator. It shows the love of God everywhere through these fragrances going back and forth, which she imagines about the king. Now that's verses 12 to 14. Let's look at the king's response to her words in verse 15 to 17. There's one word that's used three times in the first two verses, fair, which means beautiful. So the king's speaking back to the woman. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. In his eyes, we're all beautiful. No matter what we really look like, inwardly in that relationship, we're beautiful in the eyes of the king. Thou hast dove's eyes. I'll read verse 16 before we get into that dove's eyes because it's one of maybe 10 threads of truth of doctrine that run through Song of Solomon from chapter 1 to 8 to show a progressive growing love between the woman and the man, the woman and the king. That's a value we get to see. What we were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, if we're saved that long, or 30, some have been saved 40, but there has to be a progressive love if we're truly a Christian. It doesn't stay the same. We change. And if it doesn't, we're going to be very sad because 
the world's got us, our old man, the devil, and we're going to go into depression, we're going to have that battle be very uncomfortable because we're living the carnal life, not the spiritual life in Christ. Fair, beautiful. He sees us as beautiful and fair. My beloved, yes, pleasant. Uh, uh, you'd say that's an adjective related to beautiful. So that's how he sees her. The key thing here is eyes, eyes of a dove. When you look into the eyes of a dove, you see a clearness, a, uh, a peace. That's what you really see. It's a peace, the the dove represents the Holy Spirit when Jesus was baptized. A dove, as a dove came down. Because of the peace, because of the clearness, the purity of a white dove. But he's looking at her eyes now. To trace this, I'd say the teaching, the thread of truth of the eye is in eight verses Chapter 1, 6, she wouldn't even look up to him. Humility, the very beginning. Then here, he's looking at her eyes. When we look at each other's eyes, they're supposed to be the windows of the soul, looking at people in the eye. As it grows in the, the, their love between each other, and we'll get into it, but chapter 4, 1, 4, 9, 5, 12, 6, 5, 7, 4, 8, 10, all speak of the eyes of the woman or the king looking. And we're going to see how it grows, one of the indicators of a growing relationship. Because when you, she finally looks up to him with one eye, we're going to see his reaction. And then she'll look up to him with both eyes. And you see more of a reaction from the king. So these are, are beautiful threads of truth in this book of Song of Songs. The, the word fair, the word I. A few weeks ago, we covered the word wine and vineyard. These are also. You trace that word in Hebrew or English even throughout the book and see the context, and you're going to see how it changes these words. Because eventually we're going to be weaving with the Lord, him and us, and us and him, abiding in Christ. We talk about that John 15, Christ in me and the hope of glory, or abide in him that you may be fruitful. It's a dual relationship between the wife and the king. So we have covered the leaving. We're going to continue on the leaving. We aren't going to get to Cleve until chapter 3, verse 6, to ch chapter 5, 1. The marriage ceremony, the procession. So that hasn't come yet. Everything out here now is leaving that old life until we're, we're married. Uh, leaving that old life, we become a born-again Christian. And it represents a growing relationship. Next week is chapter 2, the whole chapter, verses 1 to 17. And the challenge, if you can read it, and your Bibles may say this heading of who is speaking when. Is the king speaking or is the woman speaking? Is the king speaking the whole chapter or the woman speaking the whole chapter? Come to your own conclusions. Try to think it through. This is part of meditating on the word. You know, we can read it through, read the Bible through in the whole year, but really that's too quick. You cannot meditate on the word when you do it that way. There's a time for medita meditation on the word. 
praying and seeking, what is it saying? So this is part of that exercise to think uh, who is speaking when. In uh, chapter 2, that's a, a challenge. And if I'd say that uh, I hope that you can be blessed and, and think of this book in a different way. Because most Christians I speak with, I've taught this a few times before through the whole book, they really have the wrong impression about uh, this King Solomon and his 700 wives and 300 concubines, where it really conflicts with Proverbs and the middle of his life. And with Ecclesiastes, what he wrote at the end of his life. And that's okay, because we're always learning something. The Lord is trying to teach us in different ways, through his word, through others. Uh, more fuller understanding of that relationship that we have with him. Any questions? Bill, would you clear up First uh, Kings eleven, where uh, King Solomon it says had uh, loved many strange women, and then he said uh, in verse three of eleven, chapter eleven of First Kings, he says he had seven hundred wives. Oh yeah, First First Kings eleven. What verse? Yes, I can do that. <laughs> so first, these wives were for political reasons. The first one in Egypt that he took to himself early, he didn't let her live in Jerusalem around the temple because she had other gods. So he made her a place outside of Jerusalem, a temple, the first one, right? That was an exception. And the others were for political reasons. His two daughters married men for political reasons, we'll see in Scripture. So that was 1 Kings chapter 11. That's the Queen of Sheba. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, of the nations. Okay. This is... When was King Solomon king? At 20 years old. How long was he king? 40 years. When did he start to turn for all the other women for, to go after their gods? We know he did. It was after tw he, the first 20 years, if you divide, when he was writing Proverbs, he wasn't doing this. That wisdom. We know from our own selves that before he gave himself to Deuteronomy 17, says the king shall not build himself a military, chariots and horses, which he did do. He got powerful as a leader of a nation. We know that the other thing, it said you shall not acquire gold unto yourselves. And he acquired much gold, riches, more than any man. The third thing, he shall not take other wives, many wives to himself, was clearly written. And he did this for political reasons. And he could have had relations, but the scriptures don't say, after he was, when he started to give in to their gods, just their presence around him. His lot was in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Him just having those wives, worshiping other gods in Jerusalem at the temple, he slowly gave away that area, too. That's why he wrote Ecclesiastes. He says it's all vain. His heart went far away. Whether he had physical relationship, there's no indicator in Scripture that word love in Hebrew, just because it says he loved them doesn't mean he had marital sexual relationships with them. 
That's a one word, one verse, you see. <laughs> to me, because he could write Proverbs 31, that's one area he didn't give himself, but he gave himself to worldliness in all other areas. Because he only had one son that's mentioned. All of David's sons are mentioned. And other ones that have many wives in Abraham, they mention their different wives and their children. And only mentions one, Rehoboam and his two sisters in scripture. So due to the absence of mentioning and looking at the book of Proverbs and the wisdom God gave him before he really fell hard to the influence of those being around people or of a relationship doesn't have to be physical, sexual, but just being around them and their influence is enough to, that he went after other gods. That's my answer. Any other questions? Oh, yeah, totally. This so, fits. So, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, appreciate that. But what are the, one of the things I got uh, also after this was, was the practical, right, that um, in, a, in a godly marriage, right, the spirit of God will move the husband and wife to, to delight in one another. I mean, that's also really important for you know, Well, that's. Even though that's not the focus of the teaching. But and it's not something to be talked about, yeah. especially in the church. Well, <laughs> we dare not mention, or we're on God's people no, I, I, in I, I, holiness. Well, right. Yeah. yeah but I'm not talking about that. Oh, not yeah, I see, I see that. But being exclusive, there's an exclusivity to the language as well, right? There, there, there is. There's that focus of, okay, I don't have anybody else. But oh, yeah, one wife, one husband. Right. Because so some people take this really, they teach it, and they teach the sexual part is the focus. Yeah. And they think, oh, we're teaching the big spiritual truth, when really it's, <laughs> it's a deception. It's a weakness. Right. In the church today, especially. Hmm. But more than before. Well, and so... Oh, it starts out emotional and visual right. and so all, all the senses, senses. So yes. Senses, right. so. <laughs> totally, totally. But, uh, okay. Brother Phil? Uh, what, what was the uh, scripture that you mentioned? When you said I mentioned uh, Solomon's wife and his sons. Oh, yeah, I got them. Um, they're they're on the West Church website and on this PowerPoint. But I can give the scriptures later. There, you look up Naaman, N-A-A-M-A-H. You're going to see it mentioned three times, the name of his wife, and his only wife that's mentioned, and which had Rehoboam, his only son that's mentioned, which was a true love, and his first love, and his, I would say, his uh, forever love. Was she the Shunammite? Yes. Shulamite is the name of an uh, area. doesn't really give her name until later in the book. All right, let's finish in prayer. Lord God, we do thank and praise you for uh, your word. Is, is it may be presented differently or, or newer in a fresh way or, or just a... Uh, but you know the, the way to understand it according to what is written, not to go after our imaginations, we want to be a holy people and enter in that holy of holies. We know that your word describes everything and all that we need to know is written. Help us not go beyond that and uh, stay within those boundaries, those controls and in our heart, in our mind, that we put you first and, and love you back with the love which you gave to us, which you are to us even now. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, amen. And uh, I guess men's breakfast tomorrow at uh, Evans and Sunday. Hope to see you all Sunday and many more.
Praise the Lord. Have a good week.